All right, let's walk this in. You ready to go? Yes, sir. Welcome, everybody, to the PhDJ Podcast. My name is Mike. Hey, it's Joe. And we have a very, very special guest we'd like to welcome in, the one, the only, good dear friend of mine, Mr. Randy Bartlett. Say hello, Randy. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Randy. (laughs) How are you, my friend? Uh, Life is pretty good. 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 That's actually what we're going to talk about. We, we, we talked about this at the end of the show last week that we were having you on and you are probably one of the premier MC trainers in all of the country, if not the, you know, and yet we're not going to talk about MCing. We're not going to talk about DJing. We're not going to, we're not going to tap your wealth of knowledge on these subjects. So it might be a stupid approach, but I wanted to talk to you about post DJ life and and you stepping away and and I'm glad that you agreed to come on and the fact that you have this three day scruff it's actually perfect because you <laughs> clearly are not performing anytime soon so you know every every year for the last umpteen years since November came along um, I always try to grow something in November and but there's always an event that prevents it so sometimes I can find like. You know, November is a slow, slow month for us. So sometimes I'd get like one off and it would just start to look like a beard and then I'd have to shave it every right. year. So are you I'm saying by Thanksgiving, you, are you going to have like one of those David Letterman type beards like that like just <laughs> takes over yeah. your whole face? Well, the problem is Denise hates this beard with a passion. Oh. And uh, so I can only go so long before, you know, she'll just cut it off when I'm asleep. When you sleep. Yeah, yeah. Drug you. I have the same problem. Once I start growing any kind of stubble, I ain't getting kissed. So yeah, to me, exactly. by, by, by day five or six, I'm like, well, I'd really like to kiss my wife. You know, it, ow, it hurts. It hurts. So, yeah, I, uh, it's I know she says the same thing to me. Randy, there you go. Um, hey, before we start firing questions, I want to pass along a compliment to you. Uh, I called Jason Janai last week. I don't know if you saw the news. Jason got engaged. So and- um, I just called him to congratulate him. And, and he said, I, you know, I said, what kind of wedding are you thinking about? And he's thinking about a couple of different things. But he said in that conversation, he said, of all the weddings I've ever attended in my life, he goes, I think I'll remember yours the most. And he goes, especially that ceremony. He said, Randy Bartlett did such an amazing job personalizing it and adding humor and, mm-hmm. and everything else. So I just wanted to pass that along. I know I've told you that. Okay. And I mentioned it on this podcast. What an awesome job. But but here's one of our guests who's in the industry and has seen a million ceremonies and everything else. And he's the, your 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 job at Kelly and my wedding still stands out to him. So tip it's of pretty the Pretty impressive. Well, I agree. I, I appreciate that. He's uh, He's definitely one of my heroes. So that means a lot. Yeah. My favorite memory from that was Randy Bartlett, to, he, he there was some joke about the Mets, which he worked in, and then two minutes later there was another joke about the Mets. And of my of my dear friend Laura, who's not in the DJ industry but is a huge Mets fan, that's how I actually met her. I made eye contact with her when you said the second joke, and it really looked like she was going to step to you. Like it looked like she was going to be like, "What the fuck?" You know what I mean? And I, I, li- I was like, "Calm down. It's, it's not that big a deal." That's how good you were, you Jersey really people. Pissed. Jersey yeah. people. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. serious about so the let's get to the topic at hand, Randy. Um, you are retired from the DJ industry. How far in advance did you start mapping out both financially and let's say psychologically? Okay, this is the date when I'm going to step away. How far in advance did you start thinking about that? Not very far, actually. Um, unfortunately, I wish I had done it earlier. Um, We'll talk financially first. That's that's probably the easier part. Um, what what ha- Denise worked at UPS and retired when she was fifty five, which was just about ten years ago. And when she retired from UPS, I watched her be retired, and I was like, "That looks kind of cool," <laughs> um, you know, as I'm doing all my stuff. So that's when I started thinking about it. So I was, and I was the same age. I'm fifty five, um, but it wasn't at that point really in a place where financially it looked like I could do it. And so about the same time, then I just got really serious about finances and quit acting like a, you know, 23 year old needing a hot new car and cool new mixer all the time. And, uh, and, and got serious. I, you know, I always, I out earned my financial stupidity, fortunately for most of my life. And had I done what I did, 
at even 40, what I did at 55, I would have a much nicer cabin in the mountains now. Um, but the other piece of that was the, the mental aspect of, do, do I want to walk away from this? And um, it, it, that was a hard thing to do. You, you guys know when you're out there every week, I, I can't think of another job where at the end of every shift, um, you know, people are coming over with tears in their eyes and hugging you and um, handing you more money than they agreed to give you. And, uh, and, and one of the very last weddings that I did, there's, and we actually got on video, we did our typical finale and the groom comes over to me afterwards. And in fairness, uh, and full disclosure, he was pretty drunk, but he came over and he said, Randy, that ending just changed my life. Jeez. And like, you don't hear that, you yeah. know, when you change somebody's spark plugs on their car, right? So, right, right, right. <laughs> so that was going to be kind of hard to give up all of that. Um, but in 2008, um, this is going to be kind of a long answer to that, but in 2000, we used to do a lot of bar mitzvahs. And I quit doing bar mitzvahs. I, I was sort of losing the joy of it. Hmm. And I had two events coming up that I was really looking forward to. I'd worked for both families before. They were amazing. These were back-to-back -back events. The, the moms were sisters. Mm -hmm. They were in two different towns. Um, everything about this was amazing. It was incredible kids, big budgets. They treated us like gold. The, the parties were off the hook. It was amazing. And when I drove home afterwards, our staff was psyched. And I was like, eh. Mm -hmm. And I knew... I couldn't keep doing bar mitzvahs at that point yeah. because if the best ones didn't do it for me, then the others wouldn't. You lost so we it, quit yeah. doing bar mitzvahs. And the last three years of doing weddings, I wasn't quite there, but I was, it had, they had to be amazing for, for them to do anything for me. And so then I said, yeah, maybe it's time to step away. Interesting. So it wasn't, so much pre-planned as it was just a feeling, right? I mean, like if you still were stoked at every wedding or the majority of them, you know, eager to put that suit on on Saturdays, I mean, you could have kept going. I mean... I, and that part would have kept me going longer. The business has changed so much in the last few years, and it's become so impersonal. Mm -hmm. And for me, the, the, the big thrill was always the, the personal touch. Yeah. So I miss getting a phone call from somebody instead of it's a, an email. Sure. Um, I, I, I don't want to have a conversation like they did in the 1840s where we have to write letters basically to people now. Yeah. Right. Um, and so that part of it became really tough. Um, it, it became I, I tried really hard not to ever generate new business from like I found you on Google. Like if, 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 if my conversation with them was, was, hi, you know, we're, we're, we need a DJ and you could tell because it would be like, and you know, how much do you charge? And I would always say, how did you find us? And if they say, you know, I found you some random thing on Google, then I would say my, you know, my rates start at 3000. That would be the next thing out of my mouth. And they go, Oh my God, that's really expensive. I'm like, yeah, I know. And we'd be done. Cause I didn't want to have that conversation. So Those referrals is what you, is what you, yeah. I, I wanted or, people or, that were looking for me to see if I was available as opposed to looking for a DJ. Right. And I mean, I came from a background in sales. I knew I could close a, a fair amount of those. I just didn't sure. want to do that anymore. So all of those things sort of came at the same time. Um, and part of it was, you know, once I kind of got a little bit more physically fit and began to enjoy life outside of DJing yeah. and it was like, Oh, there's more to life than, you know, putting together playlists and writing intros and ceremonies. And, and, uh, you know, I think I would really much rather be in Yosemite this weekend. Sure. And so it was sort of a perfect storm. It's, here's a weird analogy. I thought about after we talked about doing this, like, you know, what really led me to, to, to pull the trigger. And I thought about, um, and please, I'm not comparing myself to them, but I thought about like, like Seinfeld when they ended the show and they're like, they're on this great run. Everything's going really it's like, why would they end? They're making like absurd amount, absurd amounts of money. But, you know, there's a point at which you're like, yeah, but I did this. 
And that's kind of how I felt is I, I began to understand how they could walk away. But because I used to go, how, I don't know how people do that. But even now I look at like Bill Gates. I'm like, I don't understand why he goes to work. Right. Like, how much money do you need? Right, right, right. Yeah, and it's clearly it's not about the money for him. I mean, there's the it. money is secondary. He's his he can't possibly spend his money. So it's not about money, but that's still his passion. That's how he goes to work. That yeah. is his passion. Yeah. So he's not doing it for the money. And that was the way it was in the DJ world for me for the first twenty five years. And then the so, last five years it wasn't. So you know, I mean, I've known you longer than you've known me, but I mean, I've been following you for, you know, 20 plus years. Every DJ conference that I was at I was always sitting somewhere in that room when I knew Randy Bartlett was coming on. Same with Mike, always. Uh, first met you. You were not a small, you were not the size you are now. You were not my size when I met you. And so uh, in, in this in this journey towards retirement, was that part of it or I guess, did you start getting in shape, getting outside more, getting fit to, to lead to, to retirement because you knew that you wanted to live 40 more years or was it a different sequence? Or do, it was probably or the just, opposite. Okay. It was probably okay. the opposite. It was probably, I mean, I got, I, I got fit because I, I reached a point in my life where like you can be fat in your 30s and, yeah. and out of shape and your body just goes whatever no big deal i'll just process right. the stuff and sure and it got to the point where you know tying my shoes needed i needed to be a rest afterwards wow. and so and then when my health and I, I got diabetes and once once i got diabetes is like i i am too low maintenance of a person to have diabetes I, yeah that's just too many that's attacked from too many different places right and sure. so um i so I, I, I realized I had to make a, a decision in, in order to, to keep living. And then once I did that, it opened up a whole new world for me of there's a thing I've, I've shared. I, I wish I knew who first wrote it, but I've shared it many times. And it is exercise is, uh, a, is not punishment for what you ate. It's a, uh, it, it's a celebration of what your body can do. And so that kind of became my mantra. And it's like I was yesterday stacking firewood, which, by the way, not fun. No, uh, <laughs> done but, that. Yes, but I will say this: stacking firewood when you're retired is a lot more fun because I did probably six hours worth of work over a period of about a week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, <laughs> and you know you're actually going to burn it, and it's not going to rot to where you have to replace it the following year or the next year after yeah. that. You know, like I'm actually going to enjoy this. I'm going to have a fire pit. I'm going to build fires inside because I'm not going to be out working every night. Yeah, and so you, so I do that stuff, and I would work a little while, and it's it's kind of funny. People go, "Man, you do a lot of work," and I was like, "I don't have a job." Yeah. <laughs> so I don't work very hard. It looks like I work hard because I post everything I do. I mean, it's, you know, I clean a screen. I'm like, look, I cleaned a screen. Um, but, you know, I I do try to make sure like one of the things for me is when I when I first talked about retiring, I was surprised at the number of people who made comments along the lines of you're not going to be able to retire. You're not going to be able to not do anything. And, and I was like, I didn't say I was going to die. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be a DJ anymore. Right. So there's plenty of stuff to do. So now I, I try to make sure that I never have days where I don't have something on my to-do list. Mm. Um, and, you know, but I do it at my pace now. And it's not before it was like, yeah, I would like to get the firewood stacked. Unfortunately, I got this phone call I wasn't expecting from a bride who blah, 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 you know. Yeah. And, and I'm at everybody else's beck and call. So now I'm doing stuff on my schedule, which is, I mean, even like this, you, I was like, yeah, I suppose I could get up early enough for the East Coast <laughs> guys to do this. Like, sure. Yeah, I was like, Mike, why are we recording so late? Because Mike and I usually do 9, 8.30 Yeah, or we nine. usually do 9 a.m. And I was like, well, oh, that's going to be 6 a.m. for Randy. I know I know, we right. can't get ready on <laughs> no, 6 no, a.m. No, no, no. There's no way. He's on the West so, Coast, for those of you so, who didn't So, know. Randy, you thought about, before you, re you retired, you thought about whether or not you were going to miss performing. But obviously, that was just conjecture. And, and that is, to me, one of my biggest fears, that I'm going to step away and then not be able to replace that in my life with some kind of other high because it is a high performing is yeah, a high. Yeah. So it's been what now a couple of years. When, when did years. you do your last yeah. event? Two years. Do Two you years. miss it? Are there Saturday nights where you're like, damn, I wish I was rocking a dance floor. No, right uh, 
the, the short answer is no. Now, there are some parts of it I miss. I, you know, I, in my Facebook memory, something will show up and I'll think about like the guy I was talking about is like, you know, with tears in his eyes. I, I miss because I like doing things for people. I like I like touching people's lives. And so I miss that from there. But I like, found like other you ways. Did, like you did with Kelly and I by, by officiating our wedding, you know. Right. That, and that, so was, that was an that impression was, on our lives that we will never, ever forget. You know, and I'll, I'll, here's something that stuck with me, just as an example. So you guys have been married, what, over a year now, right? It's been a while. <laughs> it's good. Uh, March will be nine years, yes. Nice. Yes. Yeah. You, When we went through the process, um, I hope it's okay to share this, but you said something to me that really stuck with me. This is this is the stuff that I, that I sort of miss. We talked about whether or not you would see the ceremony in advance. And we right. kind of went back and forth. And I suggested that you should see it. And you were sort of ambivalent. And if I recall, I think you saw it, but Kelly didn't. Is that? I, I think so. And to be honest, Randy, I don't even think I read the whole thing. I started reading the beginning and then I was like, no, this is too good. I, I want to be surprised. And I mm -hmm. trusted you completely. I, you know, you would ask me if there's anything that was off limits. And I, I, I told you one thing and, and I don't, I'd rather not share that. And you avoid, and I knew you weren't going to go down that path. So, um, yeah, I trusted you. What are we hearing? Uh, All right. Sorry. I don't know what that is. Okay. Oh, sorry. That's that's my, my, uh, I, I silenced my phone. However, recently <laughs> I just did the dumbest thing ever, which is I told Alexa that she can, uh, oh. make phone calls. So now here's the problem. I'm at the cabin right now. Denise is at home. Yeah. So this call that just came in rings on all my Alexa. So at home right now it's saying so-and-so is trying to call Randy Bartlett and, oh. He's like, you got to make that stop. So yeah, that's actually turn that <laughs> off. That features you. Gotta, that's on your to do list today. Yeah. So, um, so your short answer was no. You don't miss performing at all. There, uh, right? I mean, it's I, uh, right that I don't miss the performing. I I miss that. You know, I, I've started to say that what what stuck with me is when you read it. You said I read it. I don't know if you read it all, but I remember you saying I wish I hadn't read it. Right. Right. And and be, because you you liked what we did, so now I'm doing you know volunteer work. I'm helping some people. I have a couple of neighbors who who um, are not physically able to do things that I'm able to help with. So I'm getting that same rush of you know touching people's lives and helping them in other ways. I led a Dave Ramsey um, financial peace uh, online workshop. So I'm doing other things. And I just got a I just got a message yesterday from somebody who was in one of my classes, and he was saying, "Here's the thing that we were able to do because of what you taught me in that class." So I've replaced it with something else, but um, but I don't miss. I, I did one event last year. The guy who was my DJ on most of my events, um, I gave I sold him all my gear. And so he he does some events on site. He called me and said, "Hey, I've got this wedding coming up. I need an assistant. Will you come and assist me?" And I said, "Yeah." So it was about it was last summer, I guess. And I went out and I did it. And I was like, "Yeah, this sucks." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I I thought maybe I would like really be into it. And I was like, "No, right. this is horrible. I don't like the music. I don't like." So in yeah. preparing for this, uh, I, Randy and I actually talked a little bit about and I had asked him that question, but you also shared with me one thing that still happens to you. Do you, do you remember? Do you want to tell our, our audience? Oh, the get, nightmares? Yeah, that, that yeah. shocked the hell out of me. I can't hey. believe they don't go away. No, I, I at least once or twice a week, I still have the DJ nightmare. And it's like everybody in the wedding business has that nightmare, right? Right. And and it's always yeah, like flor florists have nightmares about showing up and their van is empty or whatever. Correct. You know, what yeah. I mean? so like we, we all, all have those nightmares. Yeah. So the only thing that's different is I still have the nightmare, but in my nightmare now, invariably I'm retired. I'm always retired in the dreams, <laughs> but I've got somehow gotten suckered into doing something. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I don't know any top ten <laughs> songs, and like, what am I supposed to do? And I wake up in this panic, and it takes. You know, it takes a few minutes to yeah, come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're like, oh my god, I'm breathing hard. I'm like, this is horrible. Like <laughs> that. I thought wow. that would go away. Me too. Yeah, I'm, no. I'm, I'm I'm actually sad that it doesn't because it's yeah. not a it's yeah. a terrible maybe, dream. I, I hate it. Listen, maybe it's just me. Maybe you guys will fare better than me. But I was, I'm two years. And yeah, I, was I know. 
Uh, um, so you talked about staying active, always having something to do. So, so whether this is a personal thing or I'm sorry, a financial thing or a, uh, a fitness thing or a business thing, w- what advice, you know, to the, to the people that listen to the podcast, would you give, you know, people that are moving that way or want to move towards retirement, no matter if they're 25 or 55, what's, yeah, what's, you know, the, what's the move? Really, it, it's sort of like I was talking about the Bill Gates thing. It's like, you know, at what point would you retire? If you had enough money, would you retire right now? And if you would, if that's the case, then you, you got to get serious about the money and get there because really what I've learned about money in the last few years is that we have way more disposable income. Everybody, uh, I don't care where you're at, than, than you think. And you can get yourself in a position to be able to do that. I thought I was far away from being able to retire financially. Um, But it turns out, you know, you just don't need nearly as much as people tell you you need. You know, I wish I I wish I'd started earlier. I'm I'm up here. I'm I'm in this. I I love my cabin. But you know, I went up yesterday up on the hill and I was looking at one of the ones with the lake view. And it's, it's, you know, five times the cost of what I have was like, that's pretty cool. too. That's a sweet place. Yeah, right. Maybe I should have started a little earlier. But, um, I, you know, I went to Yosemite a lot when I worked, as much as I could. Now, Yosemite is half an hour away, and there are days when, it, like, it'll be, you know, it's just Wednesday, the, what's the 20th today? Mm-hmm. Wednesday the 20th, and it'll be noon, and I go, I'll go to the park. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, drive over to Yosemite and take yeah. a little... T- so Not quite the same park experience that I would be looking at at the, uh, the screenway over here, right? Yosemite's a little <laughs> different. It, but it is, but it is the same because that's how it started for me. It started with all of that for me. Started with taking walks sure. um, around the neighborhood because after I had my my uh, weight loss surgery, sure. they said just walk. And so my I still have my very first run keeper walk, which was uh, point I think it was point two eight uh, miles is how far I walked, and it was at a pace of something like thirty eight minutes per mile. I mean, it was wow. like really slow. Yeah, I did. I mean, right. it was shuffling along. Sure. Um, but then that moved into a lot more. So it really is, you know, what do you really want to do with your life? For me, you know, going back before I was a DJ, I was making a lot of money in sales. The first year I quit sales and became a DJ, my income dropped by about 80%. It was dramatic. Sure. Uh, I it went and I it's like, what are you nuts? And I was like, I love this. I loved being a DJ. And I was burning out on being in sales. I loved the money, but I'd sort of burn out on it. And so I, I talked to a friend who said something to me one day, he's, and he's known me f- previous lives too. And he said, I've never known anybody who always seems to go out on top like you do. Like you just <laughs> you get to this point and you're like, man, you got it all. And then you quit and you go do something else. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, I want to, I mean, Again, I don't not that I'm in this level, but you know, Sandy Koufax retired at 31 because they said his arm was he's not going to have use of his arm anymore. So he didn't need the money anymore. I'm sure he still loved the game. He probably missed it. But I feel like I did everything in the DJ world that I was going to do. I never wanted to be a production company or a big business, except when I listened to Mike, I'd always go, maybe I should go back to hiring people. <laughs> yeah, he's killing it. He's killing it. I could do this. Um, but I, I did what I wanted to do, and and so now I'm I'm again I'm doing what I want to do. And I told Denise one day I said, you know, I could see selling this cabin and doing something else in three years. Yeah, I have no intention to do that right now. I could do this for thirty years, but I know me, and I have a short attention span. And you know, it might be three years from now that this is not my thing anymore. Maybe at that point, what I really want to do is work at Home Depot. Or whatever, right? Or yeah, I don't know. Open a you know, Randy. It's fun. Franchise. It's funny you say that because I think whenever I walk into like a Walmart and I see an elderly person being the Walmart greeter, did he just call I, you elderly? I, I no. I, <laughs> I, let, let me get to my point. I think. <laughs> Sorry. I always think to myself, I hope they're working because they want to, yeah, not because they have to. And and you, I mean, that, that like you just said, you have that freedom in your life now. If you want to, you don't. Hopefully, you don't need to financially at any point in the next 30 years, whatever. But if you want to go back to work just to say, yeah, I got a part-time job. I mean, Kelly's mom is retired. 
and doesn't need money financially, but she helps out a, a doctor that she knows in her, her office a couple of mornings a week. And I think she does it just to 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 keep herself busy or active or whatever. And I think it's great because it gets her out of the house. And and it, so as long as it's not something that you have to do financially, like, fuck, I didn't save enough. So now I got to go be a Walmart yeah. reader. If you want to go work at Home Depot, go go work at Home Depot. You know? Every every place you go, you guys know this. It's the same back there. Every re- every brick and mortar place says help wanted. Everyone, everywhere, like, yeah, everywhere. Right? everywhere. Right. And I go through these places, and I keep saying, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, right. I love the idea, but here's the problem. I'm like, but I don't want to do it like. On a schedule, right? <laughs> I just, just want to show up, like right? Look, I don't have anything on my to do list today. Can I just pop into Home Depot, cut a few pieces of wood, and yeah. uh, maybe do a little sweep in? And my then... biggest challenge would be, <laughs> I want to get a lunch uh, for two having hours. a boss. I don't know if I could ever go back to having a boss. Like the first time somebody <laughs> says to me, like, "Hey, Walter, what are you doing? You got to," and I'd be like, "Oh, I'm not used to it." <laughs> <laughs> so I think that would be my biggest challenge. There's a volunteer program that I do up here. Um, it's and it, it's part of a bigger thing. It's called Wheels, but but basically it's people who need rides to the doctor or right. go to the grocery store or little chores around the house. And so I do that. But one of the really cool things with it is because they go, you know, we we have stuff where we can schedule you if, if you like that. We can schedule you like every Wednesday. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I'm the guy. When you call and go, hey, Randy, somebody needs this this afternoon. Can you do that? I will almost always say yes to that if I'm around. But if you say, will you do it next Wednesday? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you want that freedom. You want the freedom I, of being I, able to wake yeah, up pre schedule. Yeah. And go, was, I'm going to stack some wood. I'm going to go to the park. Uh, maybe I'll volunteer, whatever. But yeah. I, the I, good part about working for yourself is, you know, it's the old jokes like, why work eight hours a day for somebody else when you can work for yourself 16 hours a day? Right. But, but mostly you get to choose which 16 hours, except for us, not, not on the weekends. They choose the hours. That's the rest right. of the time, you choose the hours. Right. Still have a right. boss on the weekend for sure. Right. right. <laughs> so, any last. <laughs> Sometimes any, any, last parting, right, any last parting advice for our listeners or anything you want to say to the DJ community since you have our their ear at this point? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm not qualified to give advice on this other than to say, you know, most of the people I know in the DJ world didn't get into it for money. Mm. <laughs> if they did, most of them are sadly disappointed. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, they got into it because of, of a passion and a love. That's the perfect way to, to do anything. And then, like, when I got into this business, it was never, I'm going to run the DJ business. This was the thing I was going to do on the side. And then I fell in love with it so much, I went, how can I figure out a way to, to make this work for a living? And it took a while to be able to do that. And then that's sort of the, what I followed along. When I was a kid, I'll tell you one last little thing. When I was maybe 12 or 13 years old, there used to be a thing in the on the front of the newspaper called Today's Chuckle. This has always stuck with me. And the Today's Chuckle from, you know, 1969 probably was something along the lines, I don't remember the exact wording, but it was like most people are so busy working for a living, they never live their life or something like that. And I watched as my parents worked at jobs they hated mm. and came home just dog dead tired and you didn't get to do anything else and even as a kid i said I i'm not going to do that whatever i'm going to do i'm going to find something i really like when i was a young man i was changing jobs a lot and a whole lot of people were and older people were advising me you got to find a job and stick with it you can't flit around like this you've got to find something i was like but why I, don't, I mean i was working at a gas station i hated it so i quit working in a gas station um i'm making minimum wage i'm going to make minimum wage somewhere else and so I did that enough times to find, and I, and I fell into, you know, that's a whole long story, but I fell into DJing. There was no career plan. I didn't know any DJs. I went to a couple weddings and went, that looks fun. Mm -hmm. That, you know, the end. So, uh, you know, find your passion. And if your passion is DJing and you DJ into, I used to think when I was a senior citizen, my last days as a DJ would be working at like senior centers. I used to do those when I first started out. So it'd be fun to go on a Wednesday afternoon and play oldies for them. Um, that sounds awful now, but it sounded great to me in you know, <laughs> 1994, right? So find 
now I found something else that I love and I'm doing this and uh, but get your financial act together so you get to make the choice that's the whole point because had I not gotten my financial act together I'd be DJing today and I you would ha- you would have to do it you would, would literally have. have to do it right yeah um, and I I saw a guy the other day who posted something on some DJ side, some some Facebook site or whatever, and he said, I'm one of those guys who never wanted to do this full time because I don't want to lose the love for it, which is mm. I think frankly a big excuse for yeah. I I don't not doing this full time. I mean, you guys do this full time, you both love doing this. Um okay. I did it full time for a long time. I love doing it. There yeah, comes- to me there's like there's not a full there's not a day job to get in the way of me doing this as as much as I want to. So that that I, I'm I'm gl- I'm glad I don't have a nine to five and then do this on the weekends. To me, this is my life, and yeah, I'm, that would I'm be, happy with that. I, yeah. I did do that a little bit, and it was a really hard thing to do. So yeah, I mean, get your financial act together. I I, I did Dave Ramsey, and uh, that helped me immensely because I was super undisciplined. <laughs> I mean, so like. Same. That's who I am. Better. I, right. I think we. I think Mike and I've talked about this before. Financially, we we both started too late to to get our ducks in a row to save. Man, this has been super helpful. I I, I always enjoy talking to you. I love seeing you. I, I look forward to seeing you in real life sometime. Hopefully. I don't know what we're going to, Mike, we're going to have to like, what are we going to have to do? To, to get, we're going to have to pay for his ticket to come to one of these DJ conferences well, or Kelly something. And I might see him next year. We're going to oh, have a trip to the West Coast. Heading out there. Trying okay. to work out, swinging by and, and seeing yeah. the, yeah. the, nice. the, the lodge. Well, as, of, so. as of the first of the year, my current plan is kind of exiting the DJ world altogether. So wow. I do my minute with Randy Bartlett. I have 10 episodes left. Uh, yep. It's interesting today. Uh, and I record these in advance and then they go up. Um, today's happens to be, I'm talking a little bit about retirement. So that was kind of funny. Nice. Nice uh, worked. And, and, and how to get there. But as of the first of the year, um, I'm, I'm shutting down my 1% solution group. I'm, I'm just turning it all off because now I've reached a point where mostly what I get from the DJ world is just the anxiety of hearing the complaints and blah, blah. I don't get any of the joy from it anymore. So I'm like, right. well, you know, at this point, why am I still doing this? That's right. That's right. Man, we appreciate that, though. I, that, that 1% solution trained me and a lot of other people. So we, but I got to come, I got to come see you anyway, Joe, because I've, Brilliant. I'm on a trek to, to get to all 50 states. Oh, I got to North Carolina, but only through the very tip of it accidentally as I was leaving <laughs> Tennessee and going down to Atlanta, and I kind of yeah. went through like like that I stopped at a convenience store, <laughs> and I only I didn't even know we were in North Carolina, but I was in at, on the front of the convenience store. It had the address, and it said North Carolina, and I went inside. I'm in North Carolina. I made it. Raleigh is a great town. From somebody yep. who has only visited what half a dozen times, it is a great, great town. You should yep. you should go. You should spend some time. You and Denise would both love it. Well, we're gonna go up. We're gonna uh, we were gonna do it this year, and then I don't know if you guys heard about this whole COVID thing. No, what's that? <laughs> yeah, so uh, that sort of put a damper on some of yeah, our plans. Dude. We're gonna go do we I, we have a northeast trip, uh, and and I'd like to set that up with, um, if possible, with Atlantic City DJ Expo just to visit some old friends at the same time. Oh but yeah, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, we, I, Rhode Island. I haven't been up in that area. Me neither. So I, all those. I, and I have told you before, if New Jersey is part of it, you are welcome to stay. We always have the extra bedroom. You are on the hook. You told me years ago you would go to Cooperstown with me. So, Oh, uh, def- I would do that in a heartbeat, Randy, in a yeah. heartbeat. Yep. Mm. Yeah, mm. that would be awesome. So, yeah. kind of, yeah. so Well, man, thanks, this is awesome, guys. Thank you, Randy. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We will be back next week. Thank you.